In this video, we are going to compute the median for three common data series. Recall that the median is a measure of central tendency, and it's a value that half of the data points are below it and the other half are above it. It indicates the middle point of a data set. So we have four data sets that we'll be using to show you all the different ways that you can be asked to compute the median in your examination or test. The first is an individual series data set of the number of clinic visits in the last year of a sample of nine children in a community in Zaria. This is an individual series data set with an odd number of data elements. The second data set is also an individual series data set, but this time it is the data of the number of times that 10 children have been vaccinated in their lifetime. As you can see, this is an individual series data set, but the number of data elements here are even. In a moment, you will see that there is a slight difference on how you compute the median for odd or even data sets. The third data set is a discrete series data set on the number of dental clinic visits of a sample of 10 children in the last one year. This is discrete series data because we can see the variable and each value of the variable has its corresponding frequency. Then the last data set is a continuous series data on the weight in kilograms of a sample of 10 children attending the nutritional clinic in Sama Rosaria, Nigeria. This is a continuous series data set as we can see that the data is grouped with the frequencies given for each of the classes. Alright, so we have four data sets with all possible scenarios that you can have in an examination or even in a real life scenario. Let's do this. Median of individual series data for odd number of data points. This is the data set of the number of clinic visits in the last year of a sample of nine children in Sama Rosaria. This is an individual series data because each number here represents the data from one child. Let's find the median of this data. Remember that we said the median is a measure of central tendency that indicates the middle point of a data set. So our task here is simply to find the middle point. To do this, we need to first arrange the data in ascending or descending order. I prefer the ascending order because it's just logical. So here we'll have 0, 1, 1, 1, 3, 3, 4, 5, and 7. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So our number of data elements n is 9. And this is an odd number. Awesome. Now because our data values are already arranged in order, it will be easy to pick out the middle value. All we need to know is its position. Well, there is a simple formula for this. The median position is given by n plus 1 divided by 2. Notice that there is a th up here. This means that whatever we find here is just the position of the median and not the median itself. So the median position will be n, which is 9, plus 1, all divided by 2. That's 10 divided by 2, which will give us 5. So our median is going to be on the fifth position. Awesome. So let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the value of our median is 3. Easy peasy. Now we can also do this using another method if the data set is not too large. I will not advise you to use the second method I'm about to show you if you have more than 20 data points in your data set because that's too large and it may be unwieldy. I call this method the quick method. So as usual, we'll first arrange in ascending order and since the median is the middle number um, and at the median value, half of the data values will lie below and the other half will lie above the median, right? So we can cancel out from each end to find out which data value is left in the middle after cancelling equal numbers from both sides. So let's cancel the first and the last, and then the second and the second to the last, and then this and this, and then finally this and this. And here you can see that our middle number is 3, and that's our median. Awesome. Now what happens when our data set is an even number of values? How to find the median for individual series data with even number of values? This is the individual series data of the number of times that 10 children were vaccinated in their lifetime. Let's find the median of this data. Recall that we said that the median is a measure of central tendency that indicates the middle point of the data set. So our task here is to find the middle point, right? To do this, we need to first arrange the data in ascending or descending order. I prefer the ascending order because it's just logical. So here we'll have 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, and 5. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Awesome. So our number of data elements is 10 and this is an evil number. Awesome. To find the position of the median value, we will use the same simple formula that says the median position is n plus 1 divided by 2. Notice that there is a th here. 
This means that whatever we find is the position of the median, not the median itself. So the median position will be n, which is 10, plus 1, all divided by 2. That's 11 divided by 2, which will give us 5.5. So our median is going to be in this position. Well, guess what? There is no 5.5 position. So we'll have to find the average of the values at the fifth as well as the sixth position. So let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So our fifth value is 2 and our sixth value is 3. And the average of 2 and 3 is just 2 plus 3 divided by 2 and that will be 2.5. So our median is 2.5 kg. Easy peasy. Now we can also quickly do this using the quick method if the data is not too large. So since the median is the middle number and at the median value, half of the data values will lie below the median value and the other half will lie above the median, right? So we'll need to first arrange this data in ascending order because that's the logical thing to do. And then we'll simply cancel from each end to find out which is the median or which is the median number. So let's cancel the first and the last. Let's do the second and the second to the last. Then this and this and finally this and this. And guess what? We're left with two numbers. All right. So we will just find the average of two and three and get the median. And that will be 2.5. So our median is 2.5 kg. Easy peasy. Now let's go to the next data set. That's the discrete series data set. The median of discrete series data. This is a discrete series data set on the number of dental clinic visits of a sample of 10 children in the last one year. We know that this is a discrete series data because we can see the variable and the corresponding frequencies, right? So how do we find the median of this data? Recall that the median is a measure of central tendency that indicates the middle point of the data set. So our task here is to find the middle point or the middle value of the data set. Let's first modify this table in a bit to make it easy for us to compute. So we'll put the number of visits here and then the frequency here and then we can put in all the data arranged neatly in a vertical manner. To find the median for discrete series, we will need to first compute the cumulative frequency. So let's just create a new column here. And we'll call this cumulative frequency and this will be one and then the next will be one plus three so the cumulative frequency is four then four plus three and this is seven seven plus two is nine and nine plus one is ten awesome so to confirm if your cumulative frequency calculation is correct the last cumulative frequency should be the total of all the frequencies so we can see here it is ten and here too we have ten awesome and when we add all the frequencies we confirm the information that we have in the question that says we have 10 children right remember the question says we have 10 children so our n is 10 great the formula for locating the median position is n plus 1 divided by 2 notice the th here because the formula just gives us the position so the median position is 10 plus 1 divided by 2 that's 11 divided by 2 giving us the 5.5th position now we know the position of the median Next, we will need to locate the median value. To do this, we will also use the cumulative frequency. The median is going to be at the cumulative frequency value, which is just above the median position. So if we look at the cumulative frequency, the one just above the 5.5 position is 7. So we'll just trace this back to our original number of visits. And we see that our median number of visits is 2 visits. Easy peasy. Now for the last type of series, the continuous series data. Median for continuous series. This is a continuous series data on the weight in kilogram of a sample of 10 children attending the nutritional clinic in Samaru Zaria, Nigeria. We know this to be a continuous series because we can see that the data is grouped and the frequency of each class is provided. So how do we find the median of this type of data series? Recall that the median is a measure of central tendency that indicates the middle value of the data set. So we're looking for the middle value or midpoint, right? Let us modify this table in a bit to make it easy for us to compute the median. So let's put the weights in kg here and then the frequency here and then we arrange all the data in a vertical manner. Awesome, this is better. To find the median for continuous series data, we will need to first compute the cumulative frequency, just like we did for discrete series data. So let us create a new column here for cumulative frequency. This will be 1, uh, then 1 plus 3 is 4, and 4 plus 3 is 7, then 7 plus 2 is 9, and then 9 plus 1 is 10. So to confirm if the cumulative frequency is correct, the last cumulative frequency should be the total of all the frequencies. So you can see here it is 10 and here too is 10. Awesome. And when we add all the frequencies, we confirm the question that says we had 10 children. So our N is 10. Great. So first, we need to find the position of the median class. To find the position of the median class, we'll use the formula 
n divided by 2. So we'll do 10 divided by 2 to get the median class position. So this is the fifth position. Nice. Next, we locate the median class using the cumulative frequency. The first observation lies in this class, as we can see a frequency of only one. Then the next three observations lie in the second class, right? That's already four observations, right? But we are looking for the fifth observation. And the fifth, sixth, and seventh observations all lie in the class of 10 to 15 kg. So this is our median class. Great. Let's pay special attention to this class, its frequency and everything. Now, if you don't understand how we got this class, as the median class an easy way to look at it is that you should just select the class that has a cumulative frequency just above the median position so our cumulative frequency of seven is the one just above the fifth position right nice now we know our number of values should to be 10 and the median class position to be the fifth position now we know the median class to be the 10 to 15 kg class now let's go ahead and find the median value to find the median value we'll make use of the simple formula L1 plus N over 2 minus CF0 divided by F1 multiplied by H. Where L1 is the lower class limit of the median class, which is 10. F1 is the frequency of the median class, which is 3. CF0 is the cumulative frequency of the class preceding the median class, which is 4. Right here. H is the width of the median class. The width is the lower limit of this class minus that of the preceding class. So that is 10 minus 5. So we have 5. So our median is going to be 10 plus 10 divided by 2 minus 4 divided by 3 multiplied by 5. So this is 10 plus 5 minus 4 divided by 3 multiplied by 5. That's um, 10 plus 1.67. Our median equals 11.67 kilograms. And when you look at it, the median class is 10 to 15 kg, right? And our median falls somewhere in between this interval. So this is how to easily compute the median for individual discrete series and continuous series data. Now, if you've gained value with this video, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and share this with your friends and colleagues to help them. Now, if you want to learn how to compute the mean for different series data, check out this video here. And for the mode, check out this other video right here. See you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.